so much work went into this show. So many people's talents and dreams and thoughts and ideas were part of this. And when you look at the show, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg of all the effort that went into it. And I'm sort of a pack rat. And like Grunkle Stan with his shack full of mysterious junk he's collected over his life, I see value in all this. I have a hard time letting it go. After the script has been completed, um, generally what we would do is we would do a table read with our storyboard artists. Um, and this is our first audience. And we would just tell people across the table, all right, you play Dipper, you play Mabel, you play Stan, let's all pick up the scripts and read them. And we'd all read it out loud. And then afterwards, I would, I would go one by one around the room for all the artists and I'd be like, what are your thoughts and notes? As Fuller says, blend in script notes. This many drafts to figure out Globnar. And so after I would get their notes, I would do one very last like m m adjustment pass. Um, I'd send it back to them. And at that point, it's in the hands of our director and our storyboard artists. It was our job to take all of these funny, exciting words and turn them into images for the first time. I'm basically laying out the camera work for the animators to move off of. I'm posing out the acting. I'm drawing the background layouts for how each shot should look. It's a really drawing intensive job. I would do a lot of rough posing out of how I kind of imagine the characters to be acting in the episode. Sometimes this was for the animatic, sometimes this was for the storyboard artist, sometimes this was while I was writing. Here's Mabel pantomiming saying, Dipper, that crush on Wendy, you gotta rip off that band-aid. Um, here's Dipper chewing on his pen so hard that it explodes in his mouth. Um, I was always trying to figure out the thought process of these characters. I would get the script, I would uh, read it through, I would have a board team that was assigned to me, and uh, going through the script, I would usually um, cherry pick a, a sequence that I felt like I could handle time-wise to board out, and that it was uh, connected with me. And then I would also ask my board team um, which sequences they would prefer, uh, just if they have something in mind that they see for it and assign it appropriately. We usually had a, a two-week or three-week turnaround. Yeah. And yeah. we would take half of the episode. One board artist would do half, the other one would do the other section. I would start drawing immediately. I would be working through lunch, drawing, storyboarding. Later on in season two, I believe we had three board artists per episode, yeah. sometimes yeah. even four. And it was you know? two at the start of season one. The stories kept growing and, and we just needed all hands to really yeah. make it happen. They go through and they draw the entire episode out, you know, in sort of comic book form, posing it all out, and then the team pitches that storyboard to me and each one of them pitches their sections. Which was always so nerve wracking because he would sit in the back of the room like this. That's my first time seeing the episode and there will always be some really awesome, exciting moments that are better than I ever imagined, and stuff that also doesn't work any, at all. Sometimes your jokes weren't that funny, but like the show must go on, and so you had to just kind you of. You just had to go going. through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then our storyboarders would go to a final pass. At that time, it's more um, specific, like all, all the jokes and composition, everything has to be drawn. And I would have one last night with it before I pitched to the studio. And again, that's where I would add little extra jokes, things that didn't work. I'd cut things that I felt like maybe didn't fit. And at that point, I pitched the episode to the whole studio. Everybody in the team, they all come into a room. It's projected on the wall. And I say, uh, everybody, thanks for coming. This is Double Dipper. It was like seeing the show coming to life. I've got the keyboard in front of me. I'm going through the space bars, and I'm just looking over my shoulder. And... Come back when you have a ton for your sins, child. Come back when you're pure of heart. Yeah. <laughs> Alex just did that impeccably. That's really when you know what you have at that point. Every other stage is a theory. At this moment, we're pitching the whole board and we see what people laugh at. We see what people are confused by. And again, afterwards, we get our executive notes. The network was great. Like, they always had good notes. The executives working with Disney really um, had a lot of confidence in them. After we get the executive notes, it goes from that to editorial. Alex and I definitely felt like we would we would find that episode and, and craft it and hone it in, in editorial. And they did an amazing job kind of taking what was in our heads and making it come alive. Corpus Levitus, uh, Diablo Dominus, um, Mondo Vicio! Huh? Whoa. Whoa. zombie.
NBC, Spooky Journal, 100% real. I would get the script, and I would do a scratch version of the entire episode. I'd just sit down in front of the mic. Ah, Grunkle Stan! Oh, do do I'm Seuss! Ah, I'm Bill Cipher! Ha <laughs> ha! I'm Quentin Trembley! I'm an elm! And we'd do them all, put the episode together, watch the episode. Look, Wendy, what I said back there, let's just pretend that never happened. I'll avoid the gift shop, and you... You never have to talk to me again, and I don't know. Dude, dude, it's okay. I always kind of knew. And that's where probably me and Mike spent the most of our time that wasn't writing, was watching the episode and then trying to make it even better, looking at things that still didn't work, looking at things that needed to be cut, parts of the story that don't add up. There would be late nights where we would stay in editorial, especially first season with Alex, Mike, and me, and our editor, Kevin Lacaro. We would, uh just keep refining it all the way through. And that's where we would sometimes add brand new scenes, like in um, Inconveniencing, the whole cold open where Dipper falls in love with Wendy. We watched that episode, which had been written by Mike and me, and we saw it and we realized, I don't care. I don't care about Dipper's crush. I never fell in love with Wendy. We need an opening that's all about Wendy being cool and Dipper having a crush. So at that point, then we go to the storyboard artist and we say, hey, uh, do you have a minute? Do you think you could storyboard out this new scene? We just wrote it for you. Let's split it up. Hey, guys, what's this? Secret ladder to the roof? Uh, I don't think Mr. Pines would like that. Uh, uh, uh? You're freaking me out, dude. Can we actually go up there? Sure we can. Roof time, roof time, roof, roof time, time, roof time. We do all our final edits, then we go to casting. Um, I direct the voice talent. He's very precise, he knows what he wants. We kind of discovered things together. He liked the quality of my voice, but I didn't know exactly how to do it, so we had to sort of find some things together. I remember there was this one afternoon where we were just trying to figure out what Dipper's laugh was like. There's some things he wanted me to do with my voice uh, for some jokes. You know, he's like, make a can of beans go over and just make this noise. Like, there's just little jokes that he was getting that he could hear in his head that it was hard for me to get, but now that I see it later, pretty smart. Well, time to spill the beans. Rope. Beans. Because I get nervous, I felt like Alex was always on the other side of the glass just cracking up and being really silly and really like, oh, that was that was great, just take it again and do this. I always felt like it was getting better and better with each take because because of him, because he was so silly and and supportive. There would be times where he'd go, hey, careful, you're, you're dipping down out of Dipper's range and you're just talking like yourself. So that would remind me to keep it up here. I was nervous, but I'd done it a little bit before, so I kind of knew what to do. And then Alex was like, okay, now just do um, whatever you want. Let's just do a pass of like, um, wild lines, um, just ad lib it. Um, and I was not prepared for that at all. And Kristen Shaw, of course, was like the funniest things you've ever heard in your life. Um, and Jason was great. And then I was just like, I, I, I don't, I can't do this. Um, so Alex never asked me to do that again. There's one day where um, I had to, uh, Alfred Molina came in, who was like a respected, great actor. I'm like, look, uh, uh, Alfred Molina, uh, you're great, Boogie Nights, love it. Um, today you're gonna be playing a bear bear, and you're like a bear made out of other bears, and like the ha hands are bears, and then the little, like, he's, his head is a bear, but his neck is a bear too, and he's like, I'll just, uh, I'll just go in and do it then. <laughs> like, he's like, I don't wanna hear your madness. Child, why have you come here? Multi-bear, I seek your head! Or one of them, anyway. There's like, what, six? Six heads? This is foolish. Leave now or die. I go to every single session because I want to make sure that I remember the way that a, a writer pitched a line in the, in the room, and I want to make sure that that joke translates, and I also remember the way I pitched it when I pitched the story, and I want to make sure it all connects. So I direct Jason and Kristen um, and J.K. Simmons and whoever our guest stars are that week. They put those into the animatic, watch it through again, make some more notes, and then when it's all done and good, they print out the entire episode storyboard on like a big stack of paper like this. They thump it on my desk and they say, this is your last chance. Is there anything else you want to change? So I take out my sticky notes and I do my sticky note pass, which is about, you know, usually a, a night or a few nights over the course of a week with a Sharpie and a sticky note, just going through, listening to the track, any acting that seems like it doesn't match the voices, adjusting the acting. Sometimes I'll adjust the line, send it to be animated in Korea, there's one other technical aspect of things which doesn't mean much to most people. I supervise the timing of the show or the act sheets. I'm sure nobody's talked about this with you, but it's just this weird technical thing. Basically, we have to give instructions to the animators because the show is animated overseas. 
So it's basically frame by frame instructions for them what to do, like how long Dipper should scream, or how quick Mabel should run, um, how many dollar bills Stan should pick from somebody's pocket. All those kind of directions actually are given uh, in excruciating detail to the um, overseas studio. Um, so I was in charge of kind of supervising that as well. And there's a hidden thing in that sheet timing is a lot of the sensibility of the acting and the timing that is, is in those sheets. That was Rob controlling that, Rob knowing what Alex's sensibility was and what he was looking for in the acting. Two or three months later, Korea sends back our first look at the episode. Um, it's all animated now. And this is where we get to see how the art came together. Going through and watching the episodes when they come back, he has this ability to, to watch them as an audience member who's seeing it for the first time and being like, okay, I've had 35 seconds where I didn't get a joke yet and I'm getting kind of bored, so we need to add something here. We need to add something here. We would dive back in and change things um, on a, in a story structure. Uh, I mean, we'd make big changes sometimes in post. I know from experience that every stage in the process is a chance for something to get better or for it to get less clear. You can have something as simple as there's a joke where a character is holding a red cup, um, but they're standing in front of a red background, so when they hold the cup, the joke doesn't land. Um, in live action, you see that on camera. Oh, move the background! But in animation, you don't see it all together until it's all assembled. So if you're not checking at every single stage, there might be some mistakes. And when the animation first comes back from Korea, anything we missed, that's when we see our mistakes. There was a lot of stuff that ended up leaking on the internet too, of like people would eagle eye and see like Mabel with like wonky eyes and like the awkward front on view. And you'd have to like scan every episode frame by frame, be like, oh, that's totally off model and try to catch as many as you can. There's a bit of a budget to go to Korea and say, could you fix this, could you fix this? You can't fix everything. And there's people who watch the show, they're like, did you notice that that background isn't colored in for that one frame? And it's like, oh yeah, I noticed. Um, and I had to instead choose Dipper's hat to fix in this other moment. Uh-oh, paper jam. <laughs> so very collaborative, huge, huge team effort uh, to get all the pieces to fit together.